Hi everyone, it's Chaplain April. Uh, I have been absent for so, so long, I know. Um, and rather than come up with a bunch of excuses, uh, I will talk about that in another video. Oh, I can see my cat wants to be on camera today. What you doing, boo-boo? Hmm? What you doing? Um, so, this is going to do going to be a book haul just to kind of keep get me back into the groove of doing um, videos again because um, well it's been a long road. I was traveling. Um, I'm obsessed with this mug I got at uh, the Louvre actually in Paris. There's a Starbucks um, in there, and uh, that. Uh, museum uh, just was overwhelming it was so much bigger than I ever imagined it to be uh, and um, it was quite an experience so anyway I've been traveling we've had illnesses you know etc etc uh, but like I said I will go into that later on another video but today I just want to um, uh, recommend some books for you guys um, just to get back into the swing of things here um, my first one is going to be Elizabeth Kubler-Ross's book on death and dying um, if you're in the medical field and especially if you deal with death a lot like hospice and things like that that kind of profession you would know about Elizabeth Kubler-Ross she is famous for speaking back in the day before anyone else would speak on death she did she did seminars and um, became just very famous for um, her five stages of grief she's the one that introduced the concept of that so the five stages are denial isolation anger bargaining depression and acceptance Denial. Oh, denial and isolation, I guess, is one. Denial, isolation, anger, bargaining, depression. Yeah, so that would be five. So, but people um, now say that there are more stages and they've added to it, you know, of course, but she's the one that first introduced the whole concept. Um, so, let's see. She did simple, she did sample interviews. No. The book has sample interviews and conversations, giving the reader a better understanding of how imminent death affects the patient, the professionals who serve the patient, and the patient's family, bringing hope, solace, and peace of mind to all involved. So that's what this book has in it. Um, I have not read it yet. Um, this was given to me by the hospice that I'm with now. Um, they were giving these out, and of course I snatched one up. I'm like, I've always wanted to read that book. I've always heard about her. So, no doubt this will be good if you have any interest in death and dying. If not, forget it. <laughs> Next is Susanna Wesley. She is the mother of Charles and... Um, Charles Wesley and John Wesley who were involved in founding the Methodist Church. They wrote a lot of hymns. Um, and so she is an inspiration as a woman of the faith and has been to me for a long, long time. I never actually read this book, but I think I did um, a report on her or did some research on her back in college. Anyway, I've known about her for a, quite a long time. And uh, so anyway, it's it's interesting to me to <laughs> boo boo what are you doing you gonna get she's trying to get a hold of the camera you're about to mess me up missy what are you doing huh that's my spot. I need to put my tripod up there. I need you to move. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, I'm going to have to boot you out of here. I'm going to have to move. There you go. Oh, I guess she missed me. Poor thing. So it's interesting to look at um, where, how these 
uh, people of the faith, you know, the lives that they had before that, you know, their parents and who, who was the inspiration to them. And so Susanna Wesley, uh, we'll just read what it says on the back here. She was born in 17th century England. No, no, don't try to bet that. No, you can't push that down. No, ow. No, goodness. She was the last of 25 children. I can't imagine. She was exceptionally bright and beautiful with an insatiable love for reading. By 13, she could read Greek and Hebrew, was well-versed in scripture, and had already formed strong political and theological views. She eventually married Samuel Wesley, a loving, strong-willed rector in the Church of England. But her life with Sam was turbulent and frequently unhappy. Susanna Wesley knew what it was to suffer trials. An impoverished life in hostile towns, the loss of nine of her 19 children, oh my gosh, uh, frequent illnesses, cruel torment from zealous Whigs, a spendthrift husband who nurtured his dreams more than his family, were not enough, however, to squelch Susanna's spirit. She continued to teach her children to honor God and obey his word. Then, nearing the end of her earthly life, she made a wonderful, awesome discovery. So you have to read the book to find out what that discovery is. Missy, you need to quit. No. Oh my gosh. Now she's tearing up toilet paper. I don't even know why, know why this is here. It must have been trying to blow my nose or something. Now it's torn up. You need to stop. I'm going to have to put you in the other room. My goodness. Okay. Next, we have Smith Wigglesworth. No. I can't do this. I cannot work this way. No. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm going to have to stop this video and get you out of here. No. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. No. <sighs> okay. So I'm going to have to edit this like crazy, aren't I? Thank you. This is called Apostle of Faith not going to stop. The inspiring true story of the world famous evangelist, each page aglow with the life of a man on fire for God. He was one of my dad's favorites and I read a few of his works. I mean, so long ago when I read all of my dad's library, it was, um, I was in my teens. Uh, so, you know, it was about 30 years ago, so I don't remember all of these books, all the details of all the books that I read, but I remember a lot about them. But anyway, he was a, a guy that had, you know, signs and wonders follow him, healings and all that kind of stuff. So my, my dad read about him. Now she's tearing up paper. I give up. <sighs> As a young boy, Smith Wigglesworth could not express what he felt in his soul, yet he became an eloquent and fiery preacher, preaching a Christ who transformed sinners into believers and the one who could bring health to broken bodies and troubled minds. Wherever he appeared, a railway coach, a dirt road, a luxurious suite, a poor church, his missionary zeal was always at work for the sake of others in a constant affirmation of God's love and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Moved by the trials and testing that led to his worldwide ministry, marveling at the testimonies of people who experienced through him the healing gifts of grace, the reader of this remarkable biography will discover for himself how the power of love and faith can transform sickness into health and bring peace and tranquility to our tense and fear-filled world. So, this is a... Uh, uh, another, you know, interesting, inspiring story. Um, another book that I haven't read. I think that's an, a new one that I got. All right, Missy. Let me get you down. You're going to have to get down. No, you can't stay up there. Okay. Next, we have Robbie Zacharias. 
I know I've, I've talked about him before. Um, I don't think it was this book. If it was, I apologize. Uh, but anyway, Robbie is absolutely brilliant. He is a theological prodigy, if you ask me. I mean, he he's, I don't know what his intellect is. His IQ must be like above genius because it's he's just amazing. This is three books in one. It's Deliver Us From Evil. Two books in one. Deliver Us From Evil and Jesus Among Other Gods. And I just recommend him because, like I said, his thinking about theology is just brilliant. Um, if you ever hear him speak, I mean, you'll be blown away, literally. I mean, I, I you can go on YouTube and, and type in Ravi Zacharias, and he speaks at, at very prestigious universities around the country, and, and has. I don't know if he still does. I think he still does. Um, and these students will come and hear him speak, and then they have question and answer sessions where they ask these, you know, um, uh, hard questions, and he answers them right there on the spot. Um, and a lot of them are just theological questions that everyone has that have been around for centuries, you know, where did evil come from, and, you know, the, all these things, and he just spouts out answers, and he's usually pretty spot on. It's, it's a pretty amazing guy. Uh, and then there's another guy that um, has gone with him a few times, and his name is John Lennox, and he is a modern-day, you know, Christian apologist, and I really want to learn more about him. I, I want to get some of his books, because I don't know much about him, but I did hear him speak one time on the YouTube stuff. And then we're back to Yada Yada Prayer Group. This is book two but I am now on book five so I think when I started recommending this I was on book two so anyway I've now I this I don't have well I do have some of the other ones there but I don't have I didn't have book three and four I don't think so I read those on my Kindle and I just I like it because it's the same same characters and they're just continuing their story so I don't have to learn new characters again you know so it's just neat to kind of read the sequels and uh, so I want to read through the whole series I'm on either book five or six uh, I can't remember but it's just a fun fun book to read all right I am going to recommend Terry Savelle Foy's uh, Five Things Successful People Do Before 8 a.m. And I'm really excited to recommend this book because um, I applied, I get these emails because I'm in a lot of, you know, Christian email things. And um, one of the emails was for her book club. No, not a book club. It was like a book, um, a book launch team. And so I thought, well, I'm going to apply. That would be so awesome. And I got in. I was in the book launch team for this book. So I got to read the book before it was released and give input and, uh, you know, my thoughts about it. So we, would, we read the book and gave her our thoughts and everything. And it was like a closed Facebook group. And um, so we all kind of got to know each other. It was people from all around the country. I don't remember how many. It was 15 people or something like that, or 20, or I don't know. Maybe it was 50. I don't think it was that many. Anyway, doesn't matter. But then I found out that she was coming to a town here close by. It was about an hour and a half away. And was going to speak at a church there. So I went with a friend and heard her speak and got to meet her in person. And she is Jerry Savelle's daughter. And Jerry Savelle, I kind of grew up with. My dad would talk about a lot. He is an evangelist, you know, minister. And I think he even has a TV sh program. And she was on the TV program with him for a long time. And then um, she launched out. She's written a ton of books and now has her own YouTube channel. And I, I don't know if she has a TV show, but she has her own ministry. So she left her dad's ministry and went to 
have her own ministry and um, she has a uh, burden for France and so she always goes to France to minister and has had a lot of her books translated into French and she goes there a couple times a year so um, just another interesting thing you know so I thought well if I um, get really serious about this YouTube channel and continue to do this then I would kind of want to emulate my ministry after hers and get tips from her on how she did it and all that kind of stuff so pray with me about that um, about getting more serious about this um, but I am working now you know and so it makes it a little bit more difficult for me to um, be consistent and um, I'll, I'll explain the whole process you know when I talk about it that I you know contemplated giving up and not doing this anymore uh, but I don't think that's what God wants uh, so I thought well it's been months two I thought it was only two months but I think it might be three months since I've posted a video which I have been told never let a whole month go by without posting um, if you have a YouTube channel because then you'll you'll lose subscribers and it just you have to stay consistent and I know that I totally understand that but this is not like a professional thing either where I'm in a studio or anything like that but um, so I did lose some subscribers I think I lost three which isn't bad you know so people are waiting they're waiting for me to continue this and you know they like the Bible studies and they like the devotions and things like that so but I want to get it more um, I want to get it tightened up a little bit get a better process uh, you know a way to do it and all that kind of stuff so just bear with me and pray with me I can really use your prayers uh, so um, that I can do this right and do this justice and I have started writing my first book and that is a really cool amazing thing there is a guy here that a friend hooked me up with and he has helped several several authors write books and um, so I am meeting with him right now and um, we're working on that so I'm gonna be able to recommend my own book it's gonna be about a year it's gonna be a year and but I'll have it written I will have a um, uh, book signing I mean the whole thing so in a book launch I hope you know the whole thing so I'm really excited about that so that's taking up a lot of my time too so just imagine I'm trying to be a mom to four kids you know I work part-time in another town uh, you know and I'm trying to write a book and you know all these things so um, I will be as consistent as I possibly can and I appreciate you all watching my videos and giving me this little bit of a platform I think I have 62 subscribers um, but I started with only like five so you know uh, it, it is what it is and I'm happy about it I, I like it um, I don't know really what God wants completely to do with it um, and that's where I've kind of been stuck but um, I guess if it ain't broke don't fix it right so <laughs> uh, we'll just continue on with it the way it is and see what happens I don't know how to get on there and you know produce all these subscribers and you know, if you watch YouTube um, videos uh, how to's and how to grow your channel there's all these specific things you have to do and my son said mom you have to be very you know dynamic and you know and I'm just like I'm sorry son I'm going to be who I am and that's all I can be so uh, if God wants it to grow it will have to be with who I am today and what I can give and uh, that's all I have to say but I appreciate you all um, I pray with you all and for you all um, that God leads you and guides you in your lives and hopefully my next video coming up is going to be a study 
Um, I think I'm going to call it, I'm still here. So be waiting for that. And that will hopefully come very soon. Um, you won't have to wait three months. I'll tell you that. I'll guarantee you that. <laughs> Talk to you later. You guys take care.